Good morning. This is Matins for the 30th of June. Matins begins on page 298. <clears throat> oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship and praise. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to the Lord with songs. For you, Lord, are a great God, and a great ruler above all gods. Come, let us sing to the Lord, let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. In your hand are the caverns of the earth, the heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us sing to the Lord, let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Come, let us worship and bow down, let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. Come, let us sing to the Lord, let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship and praise. God, our Maker, you guide us as the sheep of your fold. When we stray into rebellion and unbelief, bring us back and restore us, that we may follow your ways and listen to the voice of our shepherd who gives us eternal life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Psalm 94. O Lord, avenging God, O God of vengeance, show yourself. Rise up, O judge of the world, give to the arrogant their just deserts. How long shall the wicked, O Lord, how long shall the wicked triumph? They bluster in their insolence. All evildoers are full of boasting. They crush your people, O Lord, and afflict your very own. They kill the widow and the stranger, and put the orphans to death. And they say the Lord does not see, the God of Jacob takes no notice. Consider well, you most brutish people, you fools, when will you be wise? Does the one who planted the ear not hear? Does the one who formed the eye not see? 
Does the one who disciplines the nations not punish? Does the one who teaches all humankind lack knowledge? The Lord knows our human thoughts, how like a puff of wind they are. Happy are they whom you discipline, O Lord, those whom you teach from your law. You give them rest in evil days, until a pit is dug for the wicked. For you will not abandon your people, nor will you forsake your very own. For judgment will again be just, and all the upright of heart will follow it. Who will rise up for me against the wicked? Who will take a stand for me against the evil doers? If the Lord had not been my help, I should soon have dwelt in the land of silence. As often as I said my foot has slipped, your steadfast love, O Lord, upheld me. When anxious thoughts fill my mind, your consolations cheer my soul. Can a seat of injustice be allied with you? one which frames evil into law. They conspire against the life of the righteous, and condemn the innocent to death. But the Lord has become my stronghold, my God is my rock of refuge, who will turn back their wickedness against them, to destroy them in their own sin. The Lord our God will destroy them. Almighty God, do not abandon your people, but defend us from the power of the enemy. Grant that those who suffer for the sake of justice may find consolation in the cross of Christ and be filled with your peace now and always. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Psalm 119, Sheen, that is, verses 161 through 168. Rulers have persecuted me without cause. My heart stands in awe of your word. I rejoice over your promise, as one who finds great spoils. Lies I hate and abhor, your teaching I love. I praise you seven times a day, for your righteous judgments. Great peace have they who love your teaching. For them there is no stumbling block. I have hoped for your salvation, O Lord, and I have fulfilled your commandments. I have kept your decrees, and I have loved them deeply. I have kept your commandments and decrees, Indeed, all my ways are before you. Holy God, you are just in all your ways, and your commandments are the greatest of treasures. Teach us to love you with all our hearts and to love our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Psalm 84 
How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts! My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the balsam valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from high to height, and the God of gods will be seen in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather stand at the threshold of the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord is both sun and shield, bestowing grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. O God, our sun and shield, you heard the prayer of Christ your anointed, and raised him to the lasting joy of your presence. Guide us in our pilgrimage through life, that, loving you and offering praise in your house, we may find a home in your eternal dwelling place, and joyfully look upon your glorious splendor, which we behold in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hymn 438. <laughs> My Lord, what a morning! My Lord, what a morning! Oh, my Lord, what a morning, when the stars begin to fall. You will hear the trumpets sound to wake the nations underground. Look into my God's right hand when the stars begin to fall. My Lord, what a morning! My Lord, what a morning! Oh, my Lord, what a morning! When the stars begin to fall, you will hear the sinner cry to wake the nations underground. Looking to my God's right hand, when the stars begin to fall. My Lord, what a morning! My Lord, what a morning! Oh, my Lord, what a morning! When the stars begin to fall, you will hear the Christian shout to wake the nations underground. 
Look into my God's right hand when the stars begin to fall. My Lord, what a morning! My Lord, what a morning! Oh, my Lord, what a morning! When the stars begin to fall. A reading from 1st Kings, the 21st chapter. Now both the Jezreelite had a vineyard in Jezreel, beside the palace of King Ahab of Samaria. And Ahab said to Nabal, Give me your vineyard so that I may have it for a vegetable garden, because it is near my house. I will give you a better vineyard for it. Or if it seems good to you, I will give you its value in money. But Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid that I should give you my ancestral inheritance. Ahab went home resentful and sullen because of what Naboth the Jezreelite had said to him, for he had said, I will not give you my ancestral inheritance. He lay down on his bed, turned away his face, and would not eat. His wife Jezebel came to him and said, Why are you so depressed that you will not eat? He said to her, Because I spoke to Naboth the Jezreelite, and said to him, Give me your vineyard for money, or else, if you prefer, I will give you another vineyard for it. But he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. His wife Jezebel said to him, Do you now govern Israel? Get up, eat some food, and be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal. She sent the letters to the elders and the nobles who lived with Naboth in his city. She wrote in the letters, Proclaim a fast, and seat Naboth at the head of the assembly. Seat two scoundrels opposite him, and have them bring a charge against him, saying, You have cursed God and the king. Then take him out and stone him to death. The men of his city, the elders and the nobles who lived in his city, did as Jezebel had sent word to them. Just as it was written in the letters that she had sent to them, they proclaimed a fast and seated Naboth at the head of that assembly. The two scoundrels came in and sat opposite him, and the scoundrels brought a charge against Naboth in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth cursed God and the king. So they took him outside the city and stoned him to death. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth has been stoned, he is dead. As soon as Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned and was dead, Jezebel said to Ahab, Go, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give you for money, for Naboth is not alive but dead. As soon as Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, Ahab set out to go down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite to take possession of it. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Go down to meet King Ahab of Israel, who rules in Samaria. He is now in the vineyard of Naboth, where he has gone to take possession. You shall say to him, Thus says the Lord, Have you killed and also take, taken possession? You shall say to him, Thus says the Lord, In the place where dogs licked up the blood of Naboth, dogs will also lick up your blood. Ahab said to Elijah, have you found me, O my enemy? Elijah answered, I have found you. Because you have sold yourself to do what is evil in the sight of the Lord, I will bring disaster on you. I will consume you and will cut off from Ahab every male, bond or free, in Israel. And I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and like the house of Baash, Baasha, son of Ahia, because you have provoked me to anger and have caused Israel to sin. Also concerning Jezebel, the Lord said, The dog shall eat Jezebel within the bounds of Jezreel. Anyone belonging to Ahab who dies in the city, the dog shall eat. And anyone of his who dies in the open country, the birds of the air shall eat. Indeed, there was no one like Ahab, who sold himself to do what was evil in the sight of the Lord, urged on by his wife Jezebel. He acted most abominably in going after idols, as the Amorites had done, 
whom the Lord drove out before the Israelites. When Ahab heard these words, he tore his clothes and put sackcloth over his bare flesh. He fasted, lay in the sackcloth, and went about dejectedly. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite. Have you seen how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the disaster in his days. But in his son's days I will bring disaster on his house. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from 1 John, the fourth chapter. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, of which you have heard that it is coming, and now it is already in the world. Little children, you are from God and have conquered them. For the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore what they say is from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us, and whoever is not from God does not listen to us. From this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before we move on to our commemoration, a few notes. The story of Naboth's destruction by a wealthy, greedy, petulant, self-centered, depressive, easily manipulated, childish, petty, abusive, murderous ruler is instructive. God's rebuke is instructive. And God's mercy in the face of penance is instructive. I want to use that as a segue into the term Antichrist in 1 John which is a loaded term for some people because they think, for some reason, probably because of incorrect interpretations that have sunk in into their popular imagination, people think the Antichrist is a person that will have horns, or I've seen in popular media at one point that the Antichrist is supposed to be the devil's child or something. That, that, that is metaphorical imagery if it occurs in scripture at all. As John makes clear, 1 John, the, there is no the Antichrist. To be Antichrist is to be acting in accordance with a spirit that does not confess Jesus, but rather speaks the opposite. And as 1 John tells us, these spirits are spirits in the world, and the world tends to listen to them. So what does it mean to confess that Jesus is in the flesh, right? To confess that Christ came and the work of that spirit, that is a Christian spirit, the spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit. And to confess the opposite is the spirit of the Antichrist. What does that look like? Well, certainly denial of the incarnation can be a function of that spirit. But be careful. We now live in a society where if someone say, holds up a Bible, or sits in a church, we assume that person confesses Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, who came in the flesh, died, and rose again. And that may not be true. Second, 
it's fairly certain that someone who uses their power for selfish and needless gain, someone who abuses those who are supposed to be the ones they care for, someone who speaks evil, someone who lies, who cheats, who gaslights, someone who is easily swayed into doing things the way the rest of the world does. These are also activities that frequently, if not always, mark the spirit of destruction, the spirits of the world, the spirit of the Antichrist, the spirit that is contrary to Jesus. So don't believe every spirit like the world does, every spirit other than Christ. Test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Christians call this discernment. And we do it with books and media. We do it with people, especially public figures, to determine who it is they're serving, at least at the moment. But remember, Antichrist is not a person. You can't point at anyone, whether Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump, whether Saddam Hussein or Adolf Hitler or Mao Zedong or Kim Jong-un or Kim Jong-il, whether Vladimir Putin or Joseph Stalin, Those are human beings who I certainly agree may have done evil and may be under the persuasion and obeying the, and following the spirit that is Antichrist. But no one can be Antichrist in their identity, in themselves. There is the difference between resisting and testing spirits and crucifying a human being. We don't destroy humans because they do evil. We don't repay evil for evil. Because that would also be the spirit of Antichrist. But we have the spirit of Christ. Today is the 30th of June, and because the 28th fell on a Sunday, today is transferred the commemoration of Irenaeus, the Bishop of Lyon, who died about the year 202. Irenaeus believed that the way to remain steadfast to the truth was to hold fast to the faith that was handed down from the apostles. He believed that only Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were trustworthy Gospels. Irenaeus was an opponent of Gnosticism and its emphasis on dualism. As a result of his battles with the Gnostics, he was one of the first to speak of the Church as Catholic. By Catholic, he meant that local congregations did not exist by themselves, but were linked to one another in the whole church. He also maintained that this church was not contained within any, 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 was not contained within any national boundaries. He argued that the church's message was for all people, in contrast to the Gnostics and their emphasis on secret knowledge. Just a pause here to refresh, that was a lot of content. The church is Catholic, which means local congregations are all united together in one church that is universal throughout all space and time. Second, this means the church is not confined within any national boundaries. National boundaries do not affect the unity of the church. Third, he argued the church's message was for all people. That is to say, 
Christianity is not a mystery cult. Everything we teach, we teach openly. And anyone who wants to, to learn what we teach is welcome to. There is no hidden theology in Christianity. Very important points. Points that have been... Yes, every one of those points, in fact, is a point that some version of American Christianity denies. And there are a few that deny all three. Very interesting. You see, Irenaeus of Lyon was the first systematic theologian of the church. Irenaeus lived in a time when Christianity was young and fragile. He was appointed Bishop of Lyon and combated the dualistic notion that matter and spirit are entirely se separate, with matter being wholly corrupt. That's what Gnosticism taught, that matter and spirit are entirely separate and matter is wholly corrupt. Irenaeus insisted that there is nothing inherently corrupt in creation, but that humans lost their likeness to God through the distortion of sin. That likeness was restored, Irenaeus proclaimed, through Christ, the second Adam, who corrected the story of the first Adam. In a time when so much of Christianity has been reduced to disembodied doctrine and otherworldly sentiment, Irenaeus' voice rings out like a prophet's. Irenaeus of Lyon wrote, for the glory of God is the human person fully alive, and life consists in beholding God. For if the vision of God, which is made by means of the creation, gives life to all the living on, in the earth, much more does the revelation of the Father, which comes through the word, give life to those who see God. Jean Vugan has written, Go and find Jesus when your patience and strength give out and you feel alone and helpless. He is waiting for you. Say to him, Jesus, you know exactly what is going on. You are all I have and you know all. Come to my help, and then go, and don't worry about how you are going to manage. That you have told God about it is enough. God has a good memory. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, God has spoken to us by the Son. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. In the tender compassion of our God, 
the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Through your holy prophets you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation, for the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, for the gifts of relationship with others, for the communion of faith in your church, Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children, and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world, for the people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare, for all who work for peace and international harmony, for all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction. For the Church of Jesus Christ in every land. For Robert's family as they mourn him and prepare to commit his body to the ground. For Evelyn and her family as she continues to recover. For Barbara as she continues to recover and her family as they care for her. For all those who work for an end to unjust systems, especially white supremacy, racism, and the evils of our current law enforcement, judicial, and penal systems. For all those who suffer the effects of unjust systems. For all those who care for the sick and the dying. For those who will die today. For all those negatively affected by the pandemic. O God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Almighty God, you have raised up faithful bishops of your church, including your servant Irenaeus. May the memory of his life be a source of joy for us and a bulwark of our faith, so that we may serve and confess your name before the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taking on our flesh, you have made flesh holy, Lord. Help us die to our selfish ways and our faithless habits, that we might know the fullness of your new creation in our communities, as it is in your resurrected body. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that you remember the lilies when we cannot remember our own best interests. Open our eyes to wonder in awe at your greatness, that we might learn to see how all things are possible with you, O maker of heaven and earth. Amen. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected us through the night from all harm and danger. We ask that you would also protect us today from sin and all evil, so that our life and actions may please you. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. And the peace of Christ be with you always. Thank you for joining me this morning. I hope you'll join me again this evening and tonight. We pray three times a day. Morning evening, and night. Our Sunday services are also um, held over Zoom and then recorded and posted here. So if you'd like to know what those look like in this time of pandemic, you can certainly look those up and check them out. If you'd like to know more about Atonement, the church I serve, there is a website link in the description. And if you'd like to support us, there's a link and some instructions for how you might do that as well. And I hope you'll consider it. God bless you this day until we pray together again. Take care.